All right, we're right on time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to Unresolved Crime. I'm your host, Frank, and today, as always, I'd love to call us Heather. Say hi, Heather. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, uh, let's start with the intro, shall we? Let's do it. Do it. Well, today, obviously, we are talking about the the digital trail of Theo Hayes. Theo Hayes was an 18-year-old Belgian man who disappeared in the Cape Byron area. He was last sighted leaving Cheeky Monkey's Bar in Byron Bay at approximately 11 p.m. on May 31, 2019. Hayes arrived in Australia in late 2018 on a working holiday visa. He disappeared in the week before he was due to fly home to Belgium. His family, call, uh, his family called New South Wales Police on June 6, 2019. Concerned about the lack of contact and that he had failed to return, uh, return to his accommodation. The wake up in the hostel where he, uh, Hayes stayed also called the police on the same day. 
Three days after he has filled the checkout, his personal belongings, including his passport, were still in his room. According to an investigation, Australian police conducted searches along with helicopter, drones, cadaver dogs, trackers, drivers, and a rock climbers. Hayes' parents traveled to Australia to assist in the search in June 2019. His father made a plea to the Australian police to help, the, to help in the searches one. And he said, when I left Belgium, I promised Fio's little brother, Lucas, I would promise his brother to come home. Please help me to keep my promise to him. Hayes' fin uh, final fo uh, phone signal was determined to be approximately in Cape Byron on uh, the one uh, the first of June 2019. God damn it! I keep <laughs> keep uh, messing this up with the dates. In Europe, it's totally different. It's just all the way around. But anyways, <laughs> investigation in conjunction with Hayes' family and Google suggests that the last possible whereabouts in the vicinity uh, was in Cozy Corner. That's in Tallow Beach. That's also in Cape Baron. Mes uh, messaging platform WhatsApp cooperated with the NSW police uh, to end, uh, to endeavor the recovering chat logs from the night. However, the informo uh, information from WhatsApp cannot be provided to the limited uh, data because of its encryption. The Hayes family continues to uh, push authorities to maintain a focus on the case and end follow-up uh, follow with its leads. See, this is a strange thing now. Uh, I'm, I'm reading Wikipedia right now, though, uh, so I'm not su suggesting that I'm right or wrong, but I'm reading this right now. A grey puma hat similar to one Hayes was wearing when he was last seen was found in the bushland at Tallow Beach by communication search volunteers who responded to the family plight in the months afterwards. Okay, so I have um, just uh, a few questions there, Heather. So the police did a uh, helicopter search, drone search, cadaver dog search, tracker, uh, tracker search, diver search, and rock climber search. Uh, and volunteers found his hat. How? I have no idea. I mean, if, if there's no there's no trail, there's no anything, you know, like we had talked about a little bit earlier today, it, it looked like he meant to just disappear. It, it, it appears that way. It does. It does. It, it does. All of this was involved in searching and finding him, and, and you can't find somebody that doesn't want to be found. No, that's fair enough, though. That I, I truly agree with you. But if if you look at this, and that's the main reason I called you before, because it was, like, so strange to me. He uh, came in with a work visa. A work visa is, according to me, at least it used to be, six months. And then you can get, like, uh, an extension. And sometimes right. it's even here in the Netherlands, it's three months. A lot of Polish workers used to do that, have like three, uh, uh, three or six months uh, work visa, and then go back to Poland, for example. So I'm not entirely sure how uh, it works like outside of the EU. But his godfather lived there, right? His godfather lives uh, in Australia. And hold on, I just got a message somewhere. No, it kind of. Yeah, I post I posted the the picture of the little path that oh. they are. Um, they have collected enough evidence to figure out this the path that he at least took before he disappeared. Yeah, I posted that in our general. Well, that's good. But that's a strange thing, though. Uh, according to the whole story, when he went back to his accommodation, when uh, I need to tell this like clearly, he got apparently on the 9th of May, he got apparently set out of a bar. And that was the last right. time anybody uh, saw him. Hmm? Well, let me see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 
One moment. See. Oh no, the sixth, the sixth apparently. Now, his family called New South Wales Police on 6th of uh, June. Okay. But where did he get set out the bar? I read that somewhere. Da, 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 da. I thought I did all the research, good dear. Yes. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, I cannot find a date. The fuck is this? Anyways. <clears throat> um interesting though is that he got uh I do not exactly know the date, but that's kinda irrelevant uh because of the information we are telling you that uh pretty much five to six months after after uh, apparently approximately that his work visa is ending and he should be uh, 13 days that's almost two weeks he should be flying home he disappeared and there's a 60 minute uh, episode uh, of him on uh, Australian 60 minutes and they say, according to them, and I think this is really terrific, though, because if they are right, then they do uh, have really a good lead on him. They say that he uh, arrived on Cozy Corner. That's, uh, like, way opposite of his host uh, hostile that he uh, supposedly was. And that he uh, was not drunk. He had only two uh, two uh, drinks to drink, apparently. But if you look at the video surveillance footage, that's actually inside the bar of uh, Cheesy Monkeys. That that was the last place that he was uh, before he went like disappearing. He danced like on tables and that kind of stuff. And that that does not necessarily mean that you're drunk or anything, but it kind of does give you an indication if you are set out of a bar. That apparently, uh, according to a lot of people, is not like the the place to be at that point, because Cheesy Monkeys is apparently a real violent club. But in that video surveillance, you do not see that it's like a real violent club. It's he kind of gets like set out by a bouncer, and you need to think about that because that's like real video evidence. And if you get set out by a bon uh, bouncer, it does not necessarily mean like. You did some shit, but it does tell you something. It can go either way. So I think that's a, a false proposition that people are making that, yeah, you only had two people to drink. But who who knows? Maybe he had, like, some ecstasy or so uh, in his drink. And you do not know that. And it might, uh, it might be, like, uh, a guy that uh, can handle alcohol, but we are not sure how, ma how much, if it, was like an empty stomach or something. I mean, this guy was backpacking. We do not know uh, in what situation he came there. He he, he came into a hostile, uh, yeah, hostile environment. I was <laughs> going to say, but that's just true. He came into a hostile, <laughs> and he went to a bar. Like different situation could happen. Situations. Yeah. I mean, I'm not being, in this case, like, offensive to the family, but it looks like in all the situations, if you look uh how, for example, Fio's last uh, Facebook message went, he told or he asked that somebody wanted to uh, buy his bike because he wanted uh, to go farm work. And that's fair if you were backpacking, right? But he went there on a work visa. Mm -hmm. So he, wa he was intending to stay there for a long time. Yeah. And then afterwards, afterwards that his uh, visa probably almost ended. Then he disappeared. 
it kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really the person who wants to do suggestions or assumptions, but not well. I'm guess I'm, I'm kind of well the person <laughs> to do that. But I don't know. This just smells voluntary. If you look at his Facebook, he has like uh, with like French fries, uh, middle finger to the Belgian flag. And I might be wrong. I could be wrong. And I definitely would agree that I'm wrong like like a lot of times. But I think it's necessarily to uh, kind of take like another point. Because I think it's not fair to this person that uh, if he's voluntarily missing. Then it probably had a reason. They never found his phone, did they? No, they, they, did they only accessed it through his Google Google accounts, right? Yeah. And according to the 60-minute six, uh, 60 podcast, and I am still fucking baffled with that, I'm st- honestly. Apparently, they found a ha- handshake with another Wi-Fi password. And, uh, yeah. like, uh, and the last... Per- uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm so getting fucking pissed off about these series. But anyways, <laughs> that's kind of uh, the whole intention we were doing this. Apparently, the lighthouse that uh, he was at, the cozy corner part of uh, Australia, near Byron Bay, that uh, the lighthouse apparently had like an antenna that uh, conf- confirms like telephone signals. And uh, it did not get uh, get picked up by that, so, thus meaning that his telephone should be still in the area and not like in the water. Because uh, to the Australian police, and fair enough to them, though, you, if you do not have the resources and a lot of people get missing there, and we will get that in a second, it's, I don't think it's really honest, though, but that's always with these missing person cases, like, you need to go, like, in the best situation, right? You always need to go, like, um, if they don't have information, you always need to go, like, the worst case scenario, according to police. And I think that's kind of bullshit because it's kind of scrutiny to the family. Yeah. But then again, if you look at, uh, if this is the information that we are being given and those Google Maps uh, signals or pings that are being given are true, then some weird shit happened because apparently he watched uh, I do not know how they know this but apparently he watched uh, he was pretty uh, at ease at the point that he went to uh, Koji Corner he even watched uh, part of his favorite comedy show not sure how uh, they got that information but at a certain point Theo turned his uh, location off huh And that's why they think, and at a certain point, and like I said, in the 60-minute documentary, they say he he did not turn it back on, but still they could follow him. And I think that's complete bullshit, but that's basically impossible because he used the OPPO system, like the telephone OPPO. Then it's a secret system, apparently, that you can do that. And I think that is totally fucking bullshit. Yeah. And these people need to stop lying because it's bullshit. It's fucking laughable if you watch that ad series. There's like one system that has like a, a so secret a fucking GPS system that you can follow somebody. It means that he, he apparently, according to uh, to them, huh? Just saying, it's not according to me, but if you watch it. He walked all the way across the ridge, across the lighthouse, not pinging any phone uh, phone. Uh, what do you call those? Call <laughs> oh, what? Not 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 ping any uh phone tower. Went all Rangulate? the way. Yeah, went all the way across the bridge. Uh, across the ridge. Like over, like not over the phone tower, but across it. Like he's in the boat. Mm-hmm. 
and walking across land basically and that's what they estimate that somebody took his phone and i do not believe that i refuse to believe that because it does not make any sense and afterwards after a few of his parents came up they found his hat how come police did not find his hat Right. You, you said they used dogs and everything. Yeah. A dog would have found a hat. I think it's strange. And that's every single time that we discuss these kind of cases, that every single time there uh, is some sort of uh, logical evidence that it gets found like later, like it's being planted. Right. And it's strange, isn't it? Yeah, um, well, honestly, I know like, if somebody did, per se, um, you know, hurt him and take his phone, um, then it, there is a possibility, like, that person could have just factory reset that phone, and that's why that digital trail just ends there. You would think they have the IMEI number, the MAC address, like, you would think it would be flagged if that was the case, so that nobody would be able to use that phone again, but... No, but apparently there was a handshake with a Wi-Fi address. What does that mean? Exactly! <laughs> apparently you can track somebody by uh, pinging handshakes, and that's fair enough, because, uh... Uh, in the Dutch case that I did, there is a certain uh, internet uh, thing that you can do that you can make a handshake with a cell phone tower, but not with a Wi-Fi address. If that means that if it is a Wi-Fi address, that means somebody has access to Wi-Fi. It means yeah. that somebody has to need, needs to be close into a vicinity that can provide a Wi-Fi address, couldn't it? Yeah. It's not like a, a 4G or something like that. And this is like a geographic, uh, geographically expert that did this. They said, yeah, he, the, the phone got pinged by a Wi-Fi handshake. I, I, I don't have that much uh, experience like in telephone tracing, but I do not think if that was the case, then a lot of school cases would be solved because of that. Right, you would think... Yeah, I, I honestly doubt that. I honestly doubt that. Okay, so I, I had to look it up because I need to know answers, you know. <laughs> um, so a Wi-Fi handshake with another phone is a four-way handshake process of exchanging four messages between an access point and the client device to generate some encryption keys which can be used to encrypt data sent over wireless media i still don't know what it means after reading that <laughs> well, well, what that means is that you need to do like uh you have like uh di different things to insert a wi-fi you have like uh for example uh a hotspot wi-fi hotspot that means that you're doing a 4g or 3g uh exchange between uh, devices that means that you're opening a hotspot and basically in creating your own Wi-Fi signal. And if that is true, then it's not a Wi-Fi handshake, then it's a hotspot handshake. Yeah. And if that is true, then it does mean that he had met somebody. Right. Hey. But if, if you if look at this, right? So you uh, have this guy, just in general, not to uh, a shame for you or anything, but you have this guy just in general. Let's make a, a scenario. So you have um, this guy uh, send out of a, of a bar and he walks to his hostile and he walks the opposite direction. Why would he do that while looking on his phone? Exactly, that's a good question. <laughs> Since Heather is not asking that. But 
why would a person do that? I'm just questioning uh, myself that. Would he like meet up with somebody? Oh, welcome, Elder. Welcome to you too. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> I said welcome to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked how on our other podcast the other day that people were interacting with us by putting their, their thoughts and their findings into our little chat. So I'm opening up that chat. So if anybody has questions or anything about what we're doing, they can ask them, you know? Mm hmm. No, no, I'm, I'm honestly so questioning myself that though, why somebody would do that, go in the opposite direction of the place that they actually put that Google Map information. Did did he meet somebody? Did he uh, wanted to go party somewhere else? But he did get uh, set out by a bouncer, and he was dancing on tables. So th what, what does that tell us? He was drunk. If I look at the surveillance footage, I yeah, he's drunk, and only is one misstep that he's done that he actually does. But I kind of see myself right there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, though. If if somebody goes to a bar and maybe he has only like two uh, drinks. We do not know what he got to drink, but still he got sent out by a bouncer. Why would that be? Then he, doesn't your mind go like, yeah, he might be drunk? And it's unfair to say that he's not, because if he gets set, uh, set out and people say, yeah, he, he, he's such a loving, sweet, uh, sweet guy. I think that's unfair, because that bouncer probably knows what he's doing, right? And then if you look right. at that surveillance footage and they go like, nah, he's not drunk. And you, uh, <laughs> then you see him, uh, like almost hitting that car that is uh, near him. You go like, ah, he's not, yeah. drunk. he's not drunk. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I I honestly think no, that's I unfair. No, I think he's sober. <laughs> nah, but he's watching his phone, right? So he's not drunk. There's always oh, I mean, a, like a perfect picture when people are missing and they try to depict like, yeah, he's such a nice kid and uh, he never gets drunk and he only had like two beers. But still, apparently two beers messed this kid up. So, yeah, you can even see that, even the misstep. Everybody who uses alcohol can see that didn't, that video uh, has pretty much one after drink. But still, what was his reason to go the opposite way? I I honestly don't know. But I mean, if you are drunk and you're looking at a map and, you know, you don't really know where you're at, it's a possibility that, you know, you turn around and just start walking the other direction and not really notice it because I hate Google Maps, honestly. Everybody hates <laughs> Google Maps, come on. Especially when they're drunk, come on. Jeez. <laughs> it always tells me the wrong way to go first before it straightens itself out and then it turns right so oh, that, that's kind of the issue though and who knows I don't know how long Fiu has been there and I do not know like the finer details of it but maybe uh, look he had like a certain uh, vibe and he looked calm. He looked really calm. He did not look aggressive. He did not look uh, anything weird. To an extent what you, where you would say, yeah, this kid used uh, drugs or anything. I think, you know, I had some personal experience, right? I've been that drunk and not used Google Maps, but still uh, go the wrong way just to walk it out. Just to chill somewhere. Just to... Uh, a go in the moment and vibe somewhere else than in your in your hostel, for example. Right. 
so it's it's not that weird of a true it does not necessarily mean that you need to be like uh well part of something that needs to be as essential to a crime or something but then again then there are uh there are a lot of people apparently missing from there and all right that's that's cool you know this is probably one of the most uh ex known series of that of the missing persons but where he was at that's just weird and that that kind of means that and since they did not find his phone i do not think this is a suicide like at all right in fact i, think, I don't feel like it is either but why would he do that though either I, I I I don't. If the family is correct on the character that they have portrayed him to be, then I don't I don't believe that young man with his whole life ahead of him was appeared to be calm and okay that night. You know, it just doesn't make sense that he would would kill himself. You know, or or attempt or any of that. But what if he wanted to make the illusion that way? Right, make it look like he left. This man, yeah, I, I, this man looks like an extrovert guy that uh, wanted to live, wanted to live his life, and wanted to be left alone. Yeah. He went, he went to Australia on his own. That takes some, uh, that takes some balls. <laughs> now, honestly, that takes some balls to go on your backpack on your own. Oh, I don't you're, know. You're not wrong. I mean, my my adopted mother, when she was in college, you know, it was like the late late seventies. Um, she went she went by herself over to Europe and did a whole backpacking, bicycling thing too. Like, I I'm more proud to you if you go alone. But I'm I would be scared to travel alone, especially how weird the world has turned out to be definitely but if he was only 18 or 19 years old right i mean of course he's not the youngest one to uh travel the world around i mean if you have that other crazy chick from uh, sweden who uh who sailed uh, the world around but fair enough <laughs> if you yeah. if you do that that kind of says something about your personality, doesn't it? That says that you either need some guts to do that or that you need to prove yourself in a certain extent. And I believe that since his godfather lived in Australia, that he did not want to be in Belgium at that point. Right. Right. And that sounds stupid, but I'm still throwing it out there. That's just by the Facebook messages that he's telling that, like I said, it's not French fries though. Well, Belgium is part of uh, French fries, but it used to be a Dutch colony. So, so th just so the, uh, everybody knows that we used to be way more bigger than people actually expect, but we defeated the French at some point. Not kidding. <laughs> but... <laughs> I do not know my history yet. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> no. Nah. But if you go uh, to a place alone and backpack, that can be quite uh, scary, I assume. And that kind of ends up in tragedy. I mean, if you look at a lot of backpackers and hikers, look how many times they got killed. Not to uh, be like a doomsday thinker, but they do. That you hear like a lot of stories and a lot of movies that people hitchhike and they got killed. But I don't think I, I still honestly believe that Theo is alive. I honestly do. I think he is living a lifestyle that he wanted to, and that nobody is disturbing him. And I got no clue what happened in Belgium, but I honestly get that vibe. Yeah. 
But what what kind of makes that though? That this kind of extra intelligent guy wants to just move on, I guess. Um, when when they accessed his Google accounts, are there dating apps or anything downloaded onto his phone? I do not know, but it could well be. I was actually thinking about the well. It's, it's good that you're actually uh, make uh, of bringing this up because uh, when he left, for example, maybe somebody apped him, maybe somebody tindered him that you know what we got a party there and there. Right. Uh, maybe maybe he's living a happy life. You do not know that. True. But uh, see, he he was not he was not. Uh, okay, so let me let me say this again. This is bothering me. Sort of disappearance. He has arrived in Australia in late 2018 on a, a working holiday visa. He disappeared a week before he was due to fly to home to Belgium. A week. A week. Like no fucking dingo ate him or something. A week before he was due to fly to home to Belgium, he disappeared. His family called uh, New South Wales Police on the 6th of June 2019, concerned about the lack of contact that he had and failed to return to his accommodation. I think this guy was like, fuck you all. Yep. <laughs> the wake-up hostel where he is, was staying also called the police at the same day. Three days after he has failed to check out his personal belongings. I think this man just at the time of his life had a great deal working at a farm or whatever, found the love of his life and did not want to further his identity. And kudos to him. Sophia, if you're listening, I totally get you. But at least get your parents some closure. Okay, I'll, I'll read something about the, let me see, about the, and there's actually a, an Australian crime podcast called The Lighthouse on him. Lighthouse? Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got uh, on him. is 18 that young man is full of dreams I swear the family of missing Belgian backpacker Frio Hayes say they have not given up searching for answers the 18 year old was last seen when he was ejected from the cheeky monkeys bar in Byron Bay about 11 p.m. on the uh, on May 31 2019 police were alerted six days later when they failed to return uh, when he returned to his household and cannot be found or contacted Three years, his family have said they are devastated. Another, I, I honestly do get that. Devastated. Another year has passed and Theo is still missing. Yeah. But see, there are a lot of uh, missing person cases, especially for this young man that is just in his adultery, for example. I can expect uh somebody who was this young who was just basically he's just just in the beginning of his adultery that he went to uh something so far because usually you go backpacking to find yourself right to know what life is and that you can actually extinguish it what you try to achieve so you go backpacking with no money and you go uh, to places to earn money just to get yourself on the realm. That's why I'm saying th that's why I'm feeling a vibe that uh, this is totally voluntary. I do not know why, but I could be totally wrong though, but. Heather, you're still there? Yeah. 
Well, I guess she has a customer, so I need to yeah, fill up I'm the black here. space. I just have a customer at the moment, so just hold on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> just saying. But if we look at the work visas, work visas. If you possess skills and capabilities to enhance Australia's economy and work for, uh, workforce, then you may be eligible to migrate to Australia by uh, applying for an Australian work visa. Visa. These visas are specifically designed, uh, designed to encourage applicants to obtain sponsorship through an, an employer or to secure nomination. Many foreigners, uh, foreigners that look like me. Many foreigners choose to live and work in Australia because of the lifestyle and employment opportunities offered. And I think Theo had like a dream. And like many others, it kind of disappointed him. Or did it not? And he did voluntarily disappear. So like is that for you, if you're listening, at least let something hear of you. Because this is not the way, my man. He even asked his mother, after he came back, that to throw a big welcome party. Why did you say that, Theo? Did you know you were not coming back? Or was it spontaneity? Because I honestly think you're still alive, Owen. What else do we got more? So if there was a reason for Fia to leave, what reason would it be? His parents are at least doing a great search effort to get the feel back. And Byron Bay was a place where uh, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth got born. But why do we not hear a few of his parents though? Why do we hear in the 60 minutes interview, why do we hear his God par uh, godfather? Is that the reason for Theo to leave? Because it apparently did take a long while for Theo to be missing. I mean, isn't that strange if, if your child would be missing? Would it take you a week, two weeks, a month, two months? And it's funny because on a website, it's totally different afterwards. And the web websites, they say, I, Laurent. Hold on, got it right here. More information, there we go. I'm back. Welcome back. 
Okay, no- November 12, 2018. Few land in Australia and Melbourne, where he's welcomed by his godfather, Jean Philippe Pector, or JP. He stays with JP, his wife, and children at their homes and outweighs for a bit more than a month. On mid December 2018, Theo stays in Melbourne. He returns to Otways for a few days to celebrate Christmas with JP and his family. He goes to Sydney to meet with his cousin Lisa Hayes for the new year. On January 2019, Theo stays in Melbourne with Lisa and works in the, at the Australian Open. For the people who don't know that, I think that's tennis, right? End of the month, uh, they start to work in. Uh, sh- I cannot spell his name. Uh, Shepperton? So, with double P. Mid February. How do you say it? It sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good to me. Okay. Mid February, back in Melbourne. End of the month, Theo heads off to travel to uh, Tasmania. March 2019 road trips around Eliza Springs and from Eliza Springs to Darwin, Lichfields and, and Kakadu. End of the month, Theo leaves for Carnes. April 2019, Theo works for his family near Carnes until mid-April. Okay, so he, he does not only have uh, apparently a godfather here, but he has family in Australia as well. Okay, so that's really good information to know. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, he travels to visit the Great Barrier Reef. Theo travels down the east coast, visit the White Sundays yacht, Agnes Waters, serving Fraser Island, Rain, uh, Rainbow Beach, and Anusa. Apparently, you can surf there. Anyways. Theo visits his cousin, Elisa Hayes. Okay. Elisa Hayes and Michael uh, Dorkham in Brisbane. Well, oh, fuck, Brisbane is, of course, in Australia. Sorry, my uh, geographical knowledge is not, apparently not that good as I thought. Uh, he has dinner with them and stays overnight. So you can really see in this time span that he's really enjoying there, right? Right. Okay, so May, May uh, 26. Theo takes a bus to the Golden Coast. Uh, Wednesday, May ni- uh, 29th. Theo takes a bus on Byron Bay and checks out at the Wake Up Hustle uh, at 2.30 p.m. In the early evening, Theo and his new friend from his hostel catch the hostel's shuttle bus into town to buy some alcohol for a barbecue that night. That catch then catch an Uber to the hostel about 7.45 uh, f- uh, p.m. So Friday nine uh, 35 p.m. After the barbecue at the hostel, the backpackers decide to go to Cheeky Monkeys, a local bar. Walking, a uh, walking there and arriving there at 9:45 p.m. Then you can see him walking at 11 p.m. So only like what is it? One and a half hour. Like yeah. one and one and a half hour, you get set out. But in the video, you can see him like waggling all around the place. So listen to me. That it's so crazy that people actually think that he's not drunk. So uh, wait. So he gets. Yeah, this is fucked up to me. So he gets to uh, Friday May. In the early evening, Theo and a friend from the hostel uh, get the shuttle bus and buy alcohol and have a barbecue. But he's not drunk, right? No, he buys alcohol, but he's not drunk. So, uh, Friday, uh, uh, 9.35 p.m. Same day, by the way. After the barbecue at the hostel, the backpackers decide to go to Cheeky Monkey's local bar, walking there and arriving at 9.35 p.m. So you see him waggling all around because he's not wa- apparently when you walk in a straight line you are apparently drunk, not when you woggle. But fair enough, you're not drunk then. So that, that that's what sixty minutes also tells us, right? 
like if you watch a 60 minutes huh? uh, documentary they say yeah he does not appear drunk but he, the only thing that they see when he is like with that bouncer that he's standing still that does not necessarily mean like that you're not drunk fair enough he had like two uh it literally states here why would you go to a liquor store if you not like intending to get drunk i do not get that but fair enough so the traveler becomes spe uh, separated in a bar a few asked to leave at about 11 p.m he did not uh, ask to leave he got set out but fair enough with police saying that the reason given by the bar that he was uh, appro uh, that he was approaching intoxicating that corresponds with what I was saying right with the barbecue and that we is taking a shuttle bus and that we he was actually drunk okay so let's assume that he was drunk Fio starts walking uh, walking from cheeky monkeys just over a minute. He stopped at a Kingsley Street for a minute, enters the address of his hostel into Google Maps. He continues walking for uh, 4 minutes and 40 seconds at an average speed of just uh, 6 kilometers per hour. At the end of uh, Tennyson, uh, Tennyson Street, not sure if I say that right, near the edge of the bus lane uh, that surrounds the Byron Youth Active Center, he stops for a total of almost seven minutes. There's a cricket nest. Uh, there's a cricket. Uh, there's a cricket's nest there, and also a concrete slab. And Google data show uh, that fields was within three meters of this spot. Ooh, interesting. We will come that back there in a second. We assume from there that Fio's phone movement corresponded to Fio's movement and that he was not separated from his phone. You cannot assume that because you do not know that. Anyways, he leaves the uh, concrete slab behind the cricket nest and end of the tension streets. He crosses the other side of the road and sports fields, winding his way through suburban streets that mass to Messenger Street. According to the Google data, he walked to the section and almost at 6 kilometers per hour and checked Google Maps a couple of, uh, couple of times on the way. The way always had the uh, way back to his hostel, so that's curious, right? From Maskern Street, few heads uh, uh, through more suburban streets until, the, until he reaches Malney Street, where the suburbia ends. There's a clearing looking over to the uh, uh, uh Arawakal <laughs> fucking Australian language. Uh, yeah, no, Arawakal, I'm just going with Arawakal. Arawakal National Park to the ocean and the lighthouse. From there, Theo does not take the mountain track which leads straight to Tallow Beach but instead heads on the separate bus track heading north. Going on average, street, uh, going on an average speed more than uh, 7.5 km an hour, pretty much jogging in the difficult terrain. Theo was going through the national park in the pitch black. His his stops and looking again is uh, initiatory to the hostel and on Google Maps. Again, he heads in the opposite direction, heading right further into the bush. Okay, at 11.40am. 48. Theo reaches Talabich. Exiting the bush via a tiny path. Uh, right near the exit campsite. Okay, so uh, wait, how long was he going there though? Maybe he has gone there before and nobody actually noticed that. Have we ever, ever, uh, we know we have the digital trail, right, on where he was going. But when did he actually go to Byron Bay? Wouldn't be like the, the beach is one of the first sightings that we were going and I know it sounds really stupid, but maybe we can like track that uh, up or so. 
fair enough that we know that his last trail, but what were his uh, digital trails before? If it was out of the ordinary, then we pretty much know that it was f uh, foul play. Anyways, Theo reaches Tallow Beach, exiting uh, the bush path via a tiny path. Right, right near the exit uh, is a camp, uh, is a campsite. He looks again on Google Maps at the. How do you know that? This is what I mean. How do you know that somebody's looking at his Google? Um, because Google saves everything that you do if you allow it to. Like every single thing you do, you can allow it to, to, basically but, document what your your timeline. It doesn't necessarily mean that, for example, if you take a piss, that you are looking at your Google Maps, are you? Well, my my stuff when I log in, it can tell me what I looked at well, when I looked yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like the Google advertisement. Fair enough. But here it literally states that uh, Theo reaches Tallow Beach, exit in the bush via a tiny path. Right near the exit is a campsite. Uh, looks again on Google Maps. He looks again on Google Maps. That's something that is not right with me because that's information that you do not know that he actually did. That's information that is pretty much irre uh, irrelevant. Maybe you was taking a piss, you do not know that. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's me and my brain. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, uh, it's an initiatory to uh, it's an initiatory to his hostel. Theo walks to Koji Corner at the northern end of Tala Beach on average speed of just under six kilometers per hour. So if he w was walking uh, like faster, what what does that mean? What what is what is uh, the average jogging speed? I honestly do not know. Was more a question, but. Damn, that's four to six miles. Oh, wait, 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 I got a fury, I got a fury. Okay, okay got, let, let's go on further. Few reaches telebeats, accessing the bush for your tiny path, uh, blah, blah, blah. Few then walks walks to Cozy Corner at the northern end of the Tala Beach in an average speed of just under six kilometers per hour. Huh, okay. Just before midnight, Theo leaves the leaves the beach at Cozy Corner and then goes into a bush towards a sleep hill with thick bushland and lantana. Heather, was what's the lantana? You just see what's in Montana? Yeah, well, oh, no, what's a lantana? Lantana? I don't know. No, <laughs> me neither. Okay. Surrounded by a tangle of vines and shielded from the outside world, Theo stops for five and a half minutes. He has taken less than two minutes to go down to the beach. Okay. So he went uh, all the way to Koji Corner and then apparently went into the beach. Alright. Google Timelines GPS tracking of Theo's end. According to Google, at the time, Theo was at Cozy Corner, so Cozy Corner was the last play place that he has been seen. Okay. Hold on, hold on.
one. Sorry about that. Order some more. Heather, you do know I always like to uh, change my mind, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, she said that. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that. But what if? What if Theo uh, was on his way to his hostel? Then his phone and him... Something crazy went on, then his phone got taken, and the person flee to Cozy Corner. Because of the way his tracking speed is. Maybe Fio was after him. But then what happened? Because afterwards, Fee with his hat got found. Does that make sense? 